How's everyone feeling today? I hope the folks in Florida <laughs> is feeling okay with that. And also the Gulf Coast, feeling okay with this hurricane. Okay, we're just going to. Has that been uh, like this, like actually affecting today, the hurricane? I haven't been following. I don't think it's made in landfall yet. Has, okay. Does anyone know? Yeah, about about 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I, I know that Rachel is located down there. So we'll see if Rachel joins today. Yeah, same with Robin. Oh, there's Rachel there. Yeah. Great. Hello. Rain and thunderstorms Hello. in Orlando. That sounds like every day. I've been there. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Obviously, it's a lot worse. I'm just kidding. That was my experience there, at least. <laughs> Uh, Great. Well, when we get oh, wow. started, mm -hmm. as folks are yeah. trickling in. So today is our first office hour session, section of our collab together. And we have spent some time to well, think today's about... Today's the anniversary of Katrina, Hurricane Katrina. Oh, today is an anniversary of Katrina. Thank you, Anne Meredith. Yeah, thank you for bringing that. Mm. Yeah, it's um, mm. it's heavy to be thinking about all the reality of the climate crisis and the collapse that's happening as we look at the society that just continues business as usual in different forms and different technology. And it's truly an inspiration for us to all be together to think about how we can remember our relationship with energy and each other and to try to get back into how things used to be the way that our indigenous ancestors have been doing and indigenous relatives have been holding for so many, so many centuries. So today, as we're waiting for folks to come in, we're gonna first kickstart as usual with a previously on battery so I previously on the emergency battery collab, little recap and session five. Yeah. So last time we uh, all got together and we talked about different, uh, pr we presented different problems that you may uh, be presented with in your community or in your group. And we broke out into small groups and we had discussions and we came back and we talked about those discussions. And what we really uh, hi tried to highlight was everyone has different expertise, knowledge, and talents. Um, and everyone's an expert in their own regard, in their own field. And coming together as a community can really help uh, collect all those talents and make them to our benefit and make a very unique and special collaboration um, that's very specific to our community and our group of friends. Um, let's see, what else did we talk about? Um, uh, is there anything else that you wanted to hit up on actually, Crystal or us here? Point out? Yeah, I would say that nobody knows everything and together we know a whole lot. So how do we hold a space so that you don't feel like if you have the idea of putting forth a community backup power supply, setting up an emergency battery to the community, you don't feel like you have to know every single thing. You could just put out the idea and then see how people re respond because together we know a whole lot. Perfect. Yeah, thank you for bringing up that point, both of you. Um, yeah, I think one of the things that we were, we were looking at some of the questions that came in offline on the, oh, what's that app called? Canvas. Canvas, Canvas thank you. <laughs> that came in over Canvas and we were trying to identify just what the talk about today. And one of the things that came up was some of the questions seemed very similar around um, organization um, about how to start 
um, or reservations from starting a battery collective of your own. So one of the things that we wanted to make sure everyone on this call understands is that you are a representative of your community. Um, being a representative of a community doesn't mean that you have to be the battery expert, doesn't mean you have to be the technological expert, doesn't mean you have to be the, you know, where this is going to be stored expert. Um, kind of what our hopes, one of our hopes is that people will understand how to reach out to their community, how to get more people involved in their community, how to have those conversations. Um, through those conversations, you're going to identify a lot about an individual. One of the things that you're going to identify is like, oh, wow, this is going to be, he, he, this person, he or she may make the perfect, um, you know, storage place. Like they have a, a dry basement. That's great. This, this person over here may have the, what he works at a, a company that has excess wire and, and wire just left over that they scrap wire. Great. We have his resource for that or her resource for that. Um, and you'll start identifying individuals and their resources and pulling them in. And then you'll start identifying the experts um, in certain fields and people who have the capacity and the desire to want to dig deep into these topics. Um, it would take a long time to take someone's vibration that may be planting or something like that and try to change it to a hard battery with wires, um, which we're not trying to do. We're not trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. We want to identify who is the round hole, who can fit the round hole and slide them into that, that position. So ideally, as you're inviting people into your community, developing your community, you want the people who are naturally inclined to do these things to, to, to try to step up to do those things and to encourage them. Like I noticed that you're a technical person um, or I noticed uh, tech, you have a technical aspect of your personality. Um, so we're not pigeonholing them. <laughs> um, and then say, hey, like we would love to have that be part of the larger community. Like we would love to bring that in. Can you help in this way? Or how do you see yourself fitting in? Um, and normally if you identify those, those gaps, like people who are inclined to it have a natural desire to want to uh, levitate to that location. So just allow them to do that. And that kind of goes hand in hand with another thing that I think we saw in some of the questions around um, conflict mitigation and how to hold space and so forth. We did address that in one of our earlier sessions, but I just want to make sure that it's addressed today so everyone's on the same page. Every community is different. Um, we can't give you an, an, an outline as far as uh, do this or have this agreement or have this agreement. Um, you're going to establish your community the agreements that you all come up with, you're going to come up with. I would, um, I think all of us would definitely uh, probably encourage that you allow the conflict to come up and that you, you know, make sure you set up some type of, of process or agreement with your community. And I'm going to say agreement versus a process um, about how you guys are going to resolve those issues or just talk about them. All conflict doesn't have to be resolved. So sometimes just saying, hey, here's the situation. I'd like to have the battery at my place versus having it at a central location because whatever, I have more power outages than everyone else. My wires are fragile. Like whatever the case is, at least that person can present their side and the community as whole can respond to that and say, actually a central location here is one mile from everyone. That's why we're, we're making a decision to put it there. But you want the conversation to happen so everyone can be on the same page and understand why they're not on the same page. But as far as saying this is what you do when there's a conflict, there's no roadmap to that, um, aside from, again, in us encouraging everyone to have those conversations, make sure there's space for it. Um, there's no right and right way. There's no wrong way. It's just everyone should be curious. And that's what we would offer is that everyone's curious about what's happening and what's going on. Yeah, and seeing Anna's um, photo of a sea turtle, that makes me think about swimming. <laughs> and thinking, I don't know if everyone has tried swimming before in this room, but it requires a lot of coordination between your arms, your even your hands, your legs, your lung, your head, your neck, your chest, all the coordination across. And, and when we're talking, what Yasir and Kansas talk about with different roles and different people is that coordination. And how do you, 
how do you wrestle with the conflict when your leg and your your arms start hitting each other and your head start hitting your arms like what do you do with that so then you but the best way to do is just get in the water and try it you can spend all day you want to to watch all the youtube videos about how to swim to watch all read all the books about the benefit of swimming and what type of styles of swimming you that could work that could be easy for your arm your your arms or so your your legs your your neck but the most important thing is for you to get in the water and try it out. And of course, how you try it, having some guidance is also really helpful. So today with our office hours, we want to hold that space to help all of you to at least get a sense of being ready. And I know a lot of you all just probably feel like if I have the battery, I am ready. A lot of times, even if you have the battery and you, when you don't have the people, who are who understand how to be with each other how to think with community with the battery will just be sitting there and doing nothing or could be become a liability or sometimes even be stolen if you don't have that connective tissue between the people that's going to be part of this and this is why we spend so so much time in these sessions so far talking about your relationship with your people so with that, I want to just kind of get a kind of temperature check from you all. Can I to... add something actually? Just... Yes, Kansas, of course. I just also wanted to say like, I, I feel like another mental hurdle we're trying to fight as a society is this idea of when we even say just like building a collective, I think we all imagine something like 20, 30 people in a room and everyone has compartmentalized parts and they're moving around and they're shuffling and it's like this efficient unit, right? That's like, working when in reality your organization your group your collectives will change in size and what they do and what they care about over time that's just how we as animals and nature work right so i i think thinking of yourself as building some component of soil you're you and your community are in this some component of soil and sometimes you'll get interactions with other uh, creatures or even nutrients and things that are flooded into your environment. And as you can uh, team up with them, you can respond to them in different ways. And I really think that's what starting, starting quote unquote, a collective is kind of like, it could just be you and your best friend. It could be maybe some other group that you already have, um, as you know, similar uh, alignments around, whether it be like a worship group or some other type of activity group or hobby group, right? These are, they can be any size and the connections can be to anything. So when hey, we say- can you shut your door? <laughs> so when we say like building your community, that could start just building with your immediate friend or your family, right? And starting to experience as we're talking about, it's really a lot about breaking down those norms that we have and of understanding of how we want or expect other people to behave and really just listening to building spaces to listen to other people and really actually observe how people behave. So um, I just want to get that out of the way as well. And thank you, Crystal. Yes. And we can now open it up to more formal discussion or. Well, we're uh, going to do a little temperature check. Temperature check. Thank you. That's how folks are feeling, especially because like we can't see folk, most people's faces. How, in terms of how now that we are in, this is a sixth session. We've spent um, four to five sessions, kind of talking about different aspects of the Battery Collective. We've done a variety of different exercises, um, and then being with each other every single Tuesday, and of course on Canvas in between. How ready do you feel in terms of? bring it to your community and starting something. So if you could just give me either in chat or give me the hand of a finger, how many finger, one to five, one being, I don't feel ready at all. I absolutely don't feel ready. Five being, I'm ready to go talk. To, I've actually already started talking to my community about having a community backup power supply. Three being like, oh, I think, I think I'm ready. But I haven't started, but I think I'm ready. Oh, wow. And one being like, I'm, I'm not sure. I have a lot of questions. Um, and I see, is that a five from you, Calvin? <laughs> I was you? raising my hand. Okay. <laughs> yes, well, he's got a question. 
September is Emergency Preparedness Month around the nation. So I've taken it upon myself to use that as a way to begin on various social media platforms to have a conversation about preparedness. So on my postings on Instagram, Facebook, I've talked about being prepared. I'm going to introduce this necessity for energy, for power. And there is a community-based organization I've been working with that does food distribution, which I'm going to introduce this concept to, as well as um, finding a way to do it in my own home so that I can say, this is what I'm doing, and this could be sustained and improved at this community-based organization that has a number of different services. But I think to begin the conversation out loud, we could use, all of us could use Emergency Preparedness Month as a springboard for just having this conversation amongst ourselves, like at home, wherever home is, amongst people we know, et cetera. So that's how I'm going to begin the process. Um, those tutorials about how to set up your own battery, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to use those for myself and then begin to share those throughout the course of the month of September. So that's why I'm going to begin this rollout. And um, I'm not trying to get anybody to follow me on any of these platforms, but you can, um, you know, you can look me up on Facebook or Instagram and you can see that I've already started talking about it before the holiday, Labor Day, and before September even begins. That's all I got. Thanks for putting that offer out here, Calvin. Thank you. And thanks for everyone for putting your numbers to give a sense of where we are in this room. Seeing a lot of fives, five meaning you've already started talking, which is really exciting. And the fact that we're still here together in this cohort, we have three office hours, including today, is really important for us to make sure we can answer whatever questions you might have to help us um, help you get it implemented and do and get some some things moving forward. Also seeing, of course, we have like three, four, three, fours, like you feel pretty good about having a conversation. You might not have started the conversation. Um, let's let's see what we could do to make you feel comfortable moving there. Um, we, yeah, I think, okay, we got some 2.5 to three. Um, this is, I mean, there's no no right answer of, other than the this, uh, only honest answer, all honest answer is the right answer. So for where you're feeling right now, how do we make sure you can feel like we're ready to have a conversation and to do what? Um, I'm curious to know the people who has a five and are having a already chatting with people, has there been anyone who's had a meeting yet? Hosted a discussion with the community? Seeing none. Okay. That's fine. Just wanted to see where, where folks are. So thinking just with the board. Oh, nice. Oh, Am Meredith. Yes. Oh, we got Jen too. Um, hey, how y'all doing? Uh, sending love to everyone who's holding all the different pieces, both the anniversary Katrina, Florida, and then all the everyday ones that we hold that may not ever make it to the news. Um, I think just coming into this circle, like we already have our collective, like our community, we can always broaden and deepen and connect more and more between our different mutual aid groups, but we already have the groups like we've been doing. And so grateful to be learning more from other dear ones around the country, around the world who are doing this work. And also like we've been on the ground so hungry and excited to learn more about how, um, not just about physical battery, how that's gonna come together, um, but just honoring too that that some of us are, are planting seeds in many different ways, some of it within already existing collectives and just weaving in some additional resources or adding some more layers to some of the solar battery conversations we, we've been having as well in different forms. Um, you know, because we've had to be surviving hurricanes and all the things long term. All right, sending y'all love and gratitude. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, Anne Meredith. Jen Noon, do you 
how do you feel about sharing where you're at? I can go over one of the questions that came in offline. So someone asked uh, regarding, what is this? Uh, very interested in understanding the technical aspects of building and using the batteries and surveying local needs. We have a hurricane hitting Florida tomorrow morning and it came up came out that one of the community members who has an electric wheelchair will be stuck if they are without power. So a situation where there is an emergency upon us or a potential emergency upon us. And um, so actually I'll, I'll put it out there to the group. This is kind of one of the exercises that we did last week. Um, so just really quickly, you guys understand the scenario. Um, this is kind of like the very first meeting that we had or second meeting that we had where there was this emergency coming. And I think we asked individuals to brainstorm solutions. Um, you know, imagine this is the community, like there's a hurricane about to hit Florida. There's an individual who has a wheelchair. Um, what are some antidotes? Does anyone want to chime in on that? I'm sorry, I'll qualify it too, based off of the information that you've learned here. <laughs> or your your daily reckonings, like. I'll say we have no Boy Scouts there, no Girl Scouts. Oh, there we go. We got Eugene and Eugene. There he is. Uh... Well, <clears throat> I presume that a wheelchair you, uh, runs with a DC, a low voltage DC motor. So it doesn't need an inverter, probably, or maybe it does to control the speed. I don't know, but one option is just to is to just provide the battery itself without any other equipment. Um, <clears throat> if the wheelchair batteries are similar to what we might be using, now, some wheelchairs might have six volt batteries, so then <laughs> you don't want to give them a twelve volt battery. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, and just as a general rule of thumb, so everyone's thinking on the same wavelength, like any motor that's disconnected from the grid is going to be a DC motor. So if it's a wheelchair, you can drive it around. You don't have to be plugged in. That's a DC motor. The, um, the little uh, scooters that we talked about before, those are DC motors, which means they all run on DC batteries, which... The type of batteries that we're all we've been talking about this entire time are, are direct current DC batteries, so they'll all have those type of batteries in there. Um, and yes, we lost. Sorry, I was trying to write this out in the theme, but just to honor, um, again, first and foremost, checking in with folks of what type of solidarity they do and do not want. Because if each one of us was in the same logistical situation, it would be very different. So some folks might uh, want to go to the central community hub that has a much larger um, solar battery. Some folks might want and need to stay in their physical home for many different reasons, right? Some folks, like even what I'm naming as the core critical crisis need is going to be different for each of us and so I would just like absolutely yes we need to um, dream and scheme of the logistics and uh, just if we can always um, speaking from whether it's hurricanes and I know that everyone uh, survives these things uh, that they manifest in different ways in each of our communities but just knowing that that the savior piece from outside folk of like, I know what your problem is. I know what the solution is. Do it my way or shame on you. Um, that that's thick. Um, and so, yes, yes, the exercise is where we keep dreaming and scheming different logistics pieces. But just to check to first and foremost, that we always like the solutions led by and directly accountable to folks most impacted. Um, that there's not one right way and that what is my medicine might be the opposite of what's your medicine. And so how we 
are accountable in our solidarity and our mutual aid um, and explicitly naming those contradictions from jump so we don't get into some like spazier patronizing its own level of harm. Um, yeah, love and gratitude. Thank you, Anne. Um, Barita, I think your hand was up. Yes, my hands um, was up. I was just thinking um, not to escape the obvious. I know that we have, you know, batteries and everything, but, and, you know, sometimes, you know, eventually they run out or whatever to see if we can, you know, go to a family member or a friend house or push come to shove, evacuate. I know some people may not want to do that, but there's a shelters that's equipped for, you know, special care. Um, in, you know, as, in case, um, you know, like if he's on the seventh floor and whatever power that he has runs out, is he going to be able to, what is he going to do after that? So it's a lot of thinking involved. And it's just a thought. I know that's, I would like to think there's a battery for everything, but I don't know. The battery is in the people power. Yeah, we can't stress that enough. Um, so did we come up with a solution? Tom, yes. I don't know, Tom. Can, can Tom participate? <laughs> Tom. Well, one thing I was just hearing there, which I think is a really good point, is the idea that there's already oftentimes existing assets within our communities, right? So there's the, you know, what do we need to create and what do we already have? And for a situation right now where maybe the container for this battery collective hasn't been created yet, then it's the, what are those available resources? So, you know, is there community shelters already? Are there some sort of resilience centers um, that can complement the work that is being done? And as basically, can, so you can, layer on like and which was said by a number of people like we already have a collective we're already working on stuff we can figure out how we how we bring this in and make this an, an additional um part of the work that we do um so looking at that complementarity i think is can be a really powerful thing and also it can be you know when there's an, a, an acute emergency and time's of the essence it's nice to be able to reach out to those available resources. So doing some of that mapping work earlier rather than in the last minute moment can be uh, super impactful. Thank you for that, Tom. Yes. I think being prepared is probably going to be the number one solution for a lot of things. Um, anyone else want to chime in on the, we have a person who needs a wheelchair in the community. Um, this is a real life situation here and now. So hurricane's supposed to hit tomorrow morning. Um, this is Martha. Um, I just, I kind of have to disagree with, um, the whole idea of power mapping, uh, making sure that you have all the resources connected in Planada, when we had the big floods and, and people were scrambling, you know, at four o'clock in the morning in the dark, trying to figure out what to do. There were a lot of people that were just not, they weren't panicking. They were starting to make telephone pools and making calls for folks that they could call outside of our area and say, hey, we need this, we need that. And, and it really kind of resonated with me, the fact that they didn't have anything formal, but they knew where those resources would lie. Where, where could they call in case something happened? On a greater scale for Merced County, I'm concerned because we have an emergency preparedness uh, program, so to speak, but it's an it's ad litem, it's in paper, it's in theory, it's not act an actual place, it's not tangible, it's not really manifested in the community where people say can say, I can go there, or I can acquiesce this or that, or I can get training on this or that. So for myself, I mean, I love the idea of the battery. That battery is so important. But 
how to bring that narrative into a perspective where it's real, where it's like the center of focus of the conversation, because you have to have support from governance in a lot of situations when we're, we're, um, because we were relying for emergency services and things like that. So you do need some some type of conduit to that. But in my situation, I think it's going to be the community is going to have to be the emergency service. And, and the, we're going to have to create the plan of attack and how to do what, because they're not going to do it for us. And they have not, even with these, these situations that have happened. So I guess getting together with the people that matter and that have all the, su the supplies is very important. Thank you, Martha. Yeah, in, in a lot of ways, battery, you can say the battery is the physical battery. I mean, battery ultimately is just this thing that stores energy and energy can be in a form of electricity. Energy can be in a form of many different forms, including peanut has lots of energy and you eat peanut. You get a lot more energy than if you were to eat, say, a leaf of lettuce, even though it's bigger than a peanut. Um, and so in what we're trying to do is about how do we connect things that stores a lot of energy to each other. So then we create that network with each other. And so um, when we see the physical battery, how do we how do we make sure this is linked to each other? When we see um, each of us, how do we make sure we are connected? If for anyone who's thinking about anyone who needs wheelchair access tomorrow, maybe it would be good to make sure a connection is made. It's like calling on them and having a good sense of how to check in with them. With them. But yeah, it's it's ultimately about how we are all connected with each other. I I kind of agree because it kind of I kind of envision like this. Um... The thing like fire, right? Remember, like in the in the cave dwelling days or whatever, there's fire when they discovered fire, right? And fire meant so many different things, but it was also a catalyst that brought people together to like harness fire, right? And so the battery, it's an inanimate object, yet it represents so much in the community. And so its relevance has to be created by the synergy that we put out and how we represent that uh, that battery. So for myself, it's like really trying to look at PSAs, um, working with other organizations and letting people know that there is going to be a battery in the community and it's not my battery, it's the community's battery, right? So what would you like to do with it? And would you want another battery? And what does it symbolize? Just kind of like having those co early conversations of how it symbolically is uh, a unifier for the community is really important too. not just because I know that eventually, of course, it's energy. We're going to use it. We're going to share it. We're going to create a collective. But I just think of it as like, ugh, here it is, you know, and what would you like to say about it? You know. Thank you. I think uh, Sun's hand was up. Yeah, I ended up just typing it and putting it in the chat. But if I'm happy to talk about more, what have I said? But just in general, I'm realizing that in some of the scenarios I'm coming up with, I was like, even without a crisis, like a power outage or something, that there are things about people in my community that I'm not knowledgeable. I haven't taken the time to learn. In um, even in organizing, it, it can be easy just to be excited that there's something happening and then not considering like who is not even able to access what we're sharing and developing right now. Um, and that can feel like we're slowing down to consider and to plan and to think about the ways that even what we're doing in the moment isn't accessible to everyone and the most precarious people in our community, but also the plans that we've come up with and the strategies or even the scenarios that come up that we think we need to be prepared for. Uh, so I was saying I wasn't saying the person who brought the question up was necessarily doing that, but I was realizing that I haven't even thought to consider what kind of battery is in a wheelchair and what the needs might be and how many volts it might be. Um, but someone who has a wheelchair needs to consider that every day or every time like there's they need to transport themselves. So I think that was just a reminder um, that we don't want to be 
trying to figure this out when the stakes feel even higher than they are on the day to day. Yeah. Thank you, Sun, for that. I think it's one of the testaments to like three weeks ago when we we're uh, explaining on how to size the battery and looking at your um, appliances and things that you'll be charging with the battery. Like, hopefully, on someone's list was, you know, in our community, we have a wheelchair. So that's one of the items that we're going to size this battery for. So we have a battery and we know that if you plug the wheelchair into it, it can recharge, you know, once or twice or three times, or this will get you five hours of use. Um, but all those calculations can be to everyone's uh, point um, done ahead of time. So you know, and you know what to expect in the event of an emergency. Um, and Thanks, sweet loves. This is Ann Meredy. Um, so I'll be fast because I know I've been taking up a bunch of space in the circle tonight. But I just want to name out, I was writing out a bunch of different things that uh, both blood family and chosen family have had to do to survive in situations like this. Um, and not just the obvious things from hurricanes, but again, that looks many different ways on the quiet times when no one's looking. Um, and just like flashbacks coming up and all these things. So just wanting to honor uh, both how we're talking about these things, how we're sharing these things, honoring that, um, you know, those of us in this circle have lived through different variations on these themes, have loved ones who've lived through variations on these themes. And so even when we're sharing out, like I'll share out some of the stuff I was, came off the top of the head and also knowing that that's raw. So also sending like love and tenderness to folk when we're talking about it, when we're writing things in chat that are life and death that also have like, some of us have dear ones who have been left behind in these situations or that, you know, just, so just come in with that tenderness. We got to talk about the logistics. That's critical. And um, just send in some fierce love through this conversation before, during, after. Also, like, what can we do to love on ourselves and the people that we love after we get off this circle? Because um, we hold this long time. Thank you. Uh, Kelvin, second time hand up. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with Anne. And I think it's important. Oftentimes people in uh, religious organizations talk about looking better than your story. And that's one reason why I brought up the fact that we should really coordinate not only with our community, but also with community first responders, because oftentimes we don't know what their agenda really is. And in this group, I've heard people say that they don't care or they don't know, they don't have sort of empathy for the situations of the individuals who they serve. And, um, you know, my background is working with the United States Marine Corps. I have survived, you know, blackouts in New York and earthquakes in Los Angeles. And I think it's really key to have conversations so that if there's a person in the wheelchair and there are certain first responder resources in the community, like the, the guy from Shareable said, then that person, if they choose to, will be out of their house, hopefully in a environment where they can be taken care of, that they accept to take care from, and they won't have to worry about it. But that's a decision they have to make. And if it's a trusted location and a trusted source, they might make it. But, you know, in the Marine Corps, one of the six war fighting functions is force protection. So what they do from a military perspective is also putting in concern how to keep people in uniform alive. And I'm certain that people who are first responders have some of those same responsibilities within the doctrine of their agency or department. So it's a two sided coin and pre thinking, pre conversing and having early conversations and like Anne said, being respective of where people approach this from. But um, this is complex because it involves a lot of moving parts and a lot of uncertainty. And a lot of times people don't know what could happen or could not happen based on the ferocity of an event that is being reported in time. Thanks. Thank you, Kelvin. Um, I'm just going to kind of you said a lot there, so I just want to take a, a couple of little nuggets. So one of the things is that um, just for everyone's understanding and 
one of the things that helps uh, find solutions is to focus on finding solutions. Um, a lot of time when you focus on the problem or what led to the problem, it prevents us from actually finding the solution. So um, regardless of what else is going on, like the, the bottom line is the person needs whatever the person needs. And sometimes if you repeat to yourself what the problem is, it helps the solution come up a lot more clear, especially in the event of an emergency. Um, I've heard multiple times, and I think we've had conversations in the past just about this uh, mentality that someone's going to come help us, like in the event of emergency, like, oh, you know, we'll wait for such and such. Or the, the way bureaucracy is set up, the way like the government is set up, the government is set up to govern, which means in order to govern, you have to have a sense of order. During an emergency, that sense of order is disrupted. There's not a sense of order. That is not the place for the government. So when people stand around and wait for organizations that are also in disorder, because those organizations are still run by individuals, those individuals are still subjected to the same catastrophe that's happening to you. So just the thought or the concept that, oh, you know, the fire truck's coming, the fire tr people have families, believe it or not. And the, the way that they're taught and the way that they're instructed is first to take care of your family and then report it and start helping other people. So that may be a day, that may be three days, that may be who knows. So the times where government is not supposed to work, it, it doesn't work. The time when government's supposed to work, sometimes it doesn't work either. So just make sure you guys um, have an open mind and a realistic mind when it comes to uh, solutions and so forth. Um, there was a couple of comments. I saw a couple of good solutions that both kind of came in at the same time, one from Anita and one from Anne regarding a, a manual wheelchair. So problem is person has an electrical wheelchair. Um, is it possible to get them a manual wheelchair so that they would have that as a, a plan B or a backup plan, which uh, I really appreciated that solution. I thought it was very simplistic, right? Just repeating yourself back the problem. And then what do you come up with when you actually look at the problem? Oh. The wheelchair is electric. Like, are we trying to solve for the fact that we need electricity or are we trying to solve for having the person be mobile so they can get to an exit or get to a vehicle so they can be transported? Like, what's the actual problem? And, and being able to look at that, I, I thought that was a very witty solution. Um, uh, another option is, especially since it's kind of like, I wouldn't say last minute, but it's a situation where uh, people don't have their battery collective set up right now. And you know this is a thing that's in your community, you can always go buy a battery. Um, Ace Hardware, hardware store, um, you can go get a generator. And after it passes, you can take it back <laughs> to the store. So, and they'll take it back, usually no questions asked. So it can be something that's on standby or something that can be charged now before, you know, the hurricane hits tomorrow, if that's the situation um, where you can have that, that tool there ready for the person. Um, so were there any other questions that popped up in the chat that we haven't looked at or addressed or talked about? No, it feels like we created a pretty great space to, for all of us to collectively process and think about this scenario that is very real scenario with a hurricane about to hit landfall tomorrow morning and how what do we do to prepare um, great, great things to be thinking about for those who are getting ready for lots of rain and lots of wind. Um, also good for the rest of us to really think about like when this happens to us, what do we need to start thinking ahead? Inspire some ideas um, around disability justice, inspired a lot of different thinking for each, each of us, for us to bring whatever we have to the table and we can take whatever works for us back to our community. With 15 minutes left, I wonder if it might be good for us to kind of identify some some sort of a direction of where we might want to go for next week to help make sure we all feel like we can set up a successful community meeting when you have, I mean, the number of people already started conversations, the number of people who are actually, most of you already feel, feel like you're ready to have a conversation. I wonder, I'm, I'm just kind of observing maybe 
for the next call, we could kind of have a sense of like, what would the first meeting look like? And what are some roles then and what what are some roles that we should be expecting? So it doesn't feel like we have to know everything when we go and share this with people because you don't. I, I don't know. I mean, I remember bringing the battery. Just give you an anecdote. I, I brought a battery to a member who got their power shut off because of inability to pay. And when I drop off the battery and show them how to use it, they looked at me and they're like, are you a superhero? How do you know so much? Are you an engineer? And I, I, I was able to say, you know, I'm neither. I'm definitely not an engineer. I simply learned this because I'm doing this work with other people who know these things. And so we get to learn with each other and, and move forward. So you don't have to know a lot. The more you're in it with the people who know things that you don't, the more we can move together. So I'm just kind of putting in my observation out there to see like, is this what folks are feeling like would be a good use of your time for next week's office hours to make sure whenever you put out the call for your community to um, have to start this connective tissue for us to use this battery, um, how what, what would be like a good way to start? Just putting out a proposal and seeing, I wanted to see some reactions for the folks who put down in chat from like 2.5 to five, is this a good use of your time? Feel free to unmute yourself so you don't have to be typing. Practicing our elevator speech. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Write a draft poll to tool library membership so I can have a specific question. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that sounds good. And Nick, it will be also really good to post it on Canvas. We are we are following them, so you don't have to feel like you have to keep it all. You could just put it on Canvas and we can all move. But I see Baritha said definitely. I'm only getting one yes. So I'm, I'm sensing maybe keeping it more open might be a better use of our time next week. Okay, I'm seeing a thumbs up from Alice. Dare? <laughs> yeah, we, should, we should come up with some, uh, some alluring questions. I was looking at uh, Jessica's message there about maybe practicing our elevator speech. Um, but yeah, just some alluring questions. Like you can start off with, you know, hey, what are your plans if the power if the power goes out? You know, just something simple like that, you know, to the person that you're grocery shopping next to or someone that you already know um, sometimes or a community that you're already part of. So a lot of times people have that community, I think uh, like a faith-based community or something of that nature where, um, you know, I go to church every Sunday. This is my church. Like, great. Invite your church in. Like, look around and be like, hey, this this church is not, doesn't have like solar. This church doesn't have. Uh, churches are communal spaces. Like when there are disasters and if the church is still standing, like I know a lot of times they say schools. Like people go to schools because they're built for um, a little bit more resilient usually than churches. But that's still a communal place where people can meet. Um, you can have backup battery there you can have um, solar power so people can can stay there warm and so forth but those conversations again need to happen prior to the disaster happening so if you're already part of a community elevator pitches you know go to your pastor go to whoever's the, the deacon at the church or whoever's the, the leader in that community and and talk to them and say hey look i noticed that we don't have a plan for when the power goes out like um, and we have an organ. Like, how are we going to play the organ? <laughs> There's uh, no plan for power. So, but that's just a, an example of, of different ways. But we can get into more of that next week to Crystal's point. Yeah, I, it, it feels like since so many people are pretty feeling pretty ready and either have started conversations or are ready to start conversations, it might be a really great place for the next week to either put a poll out to your community or to just have conversations 
and then bring the questions back so then you can either invite your people to come to this call or mm -hmm. learn about anything that you might have and bring it back or any questions or answers you might have and bring it back to your community and then we can come back again in our final session. Um, that seems like a really um, idea that kind of maybe resonate with a lot of people. For those people who still feel like it would be good to have a like an elevator pitch, um, I think it might be a good idea for you to pitch it to the people who are closest to you to kind of just like mention like, hey, this is what it feels like. like. This is what I'm learning, what I've been learning for the past six weeks, thinking about doing something like this and then see the reaction and then like try it out with another person, another person. And now you can go out to your neighbor or to your um, any kind of community that you're connected to, to have that conversation. And so when we come together and in a week, we can kind of see like what feels right, what doesn't feel right, what are some reaction that you're getting? We're engaging and again, you do not have to feel like you're an organizer. Maybe you're, uh, you're already an amazing organizer, but you don't have to be an organizer to just plant a seed to people. Right now, all of what we're doing here is planting seeds of an idea. And maybe you're planting seed of an idea as an organizer, and you're gonna start organizing people, or maybe you're just planting seed of an idea so that you can find all the right people so that you can thrive together as a team. So maybe, so it sounds like what we're gonna do, I'm seeing some head nods, like next week, We'll just spend the next seven days to reach out to folks, either with my close circle to practice talking about what this idea is, to pulling a poll out to the community, um, inviting the community over to ask some questions, and then we'll meet up again next week to see what type of questions we have. We'll be keeping up with the canvas um, to kind of just prepare, like get a sense of like where we're going as a as a group here to make the best use of everyone's time. How does that sound? I wanna see some thumbs up to make sure I'm like <laughs> observing this accurately. Okay, um, I'm seeing very few. I wonder this, if what the silence means. <laughs> We're collectively shaping what the next week looks like. So if it feels like, oh, thanks. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> Thank right. you, Ivy. Thank you, Ida, Anita. Uh, there was a question. Oops, sorry. Alice, do you have a question? Yeah, I did. Um, so I, uh, in doing the homework, I saw all the great little templates for the signups and community agreements and register, you know, organize your collectives. Were you intending that we would somehow just take those and then put them on our own, like a Google Doc share folder thing? Right, you weren't intending us to join literally the people, <laughs> people's power. Okay, got it. Okay, that's correct. Yes, <laughs> and then the other question that I had was, um, um, is there like an optimum? I mean, just from your experience or just hear people's thoughts, is there an optimum number of batteries you might have to serve numbers of households in your collectives? Like, right. One battery, 50 homes, one battery, 10 homes, when, you know, how many, is there a, a rule of thumb for some sustainable, resilient, you know, number ratio? It really depends on the needs. Like if you have like 10 households, we need 10 to charge 10 refrigerators. It's probably a lot harder to move 10 refrigerators to one battery. But if you have 10 cell phones, it's a lot easier to bring it to one place. So it, really depends on the needs, wheelchair, um, depends on the needs, air filter, fan, all yeah. these things, it really depends. So the most important thing is to just get in the community and try to think about what the needs are and what the relationship looks like. It, like Nick said in chat, that everything is all about the relationship and all the infrastructure pieces will come into place once you start to be with the people. Yeah. In general, you'll start with your needs. So you'll you'll come to whatever community that you're building or joining. You'll already know what your needs are. You're going to come in, or your wants are, I should say. So you're going to come into that community. Um, and as you guys discuss an open conversation, you're going to start talking about, oh, yes, I have a refrigerator in this. And someone else is going to say, great, I have a refrigerator too. Great. In an event of emergency, we're both going to share refrigerators. Yeah, no problem. 
two other people, great, we can fit a lot of stuff in this refrigerator, no problem. So then that changes now to this is what we need to support because we only need to support one refrigerator versus four. So the one team to have four, now you realize and you guys through community have talked about it and you guys discussed since we all live in the same building, you know, I can come up two floors to grab my my uh, cucumbers or whatever needs to be refrigerated. Uh, actually, cucumbers don't need to be refrigerated. Uh, milk, sorry. <laughs> Um, it's not a big deal. So, but that all comes, which is why when we're designing this program, we can't give antidotes for everything. We can try to, again, explain to people how to fish and then the people can take that information and try to transfer it to their individual communities to say, this makes sense for us. This makes sense for us. Um, and then come up with the solutions for your community. Yeah, and we've already seen, right, oh, everyone's come up with their own way and their own approach, either tapping into national movements about um, next month uh, about um, emergency backup preparedness, or whether it's, you know, starting a tool shed library. It's all really dependent on what group you're really in and what you're, as we said, you know, what the wants and needs are, so. But yeah, I mean, again, just collectively coming together and listening, right? You can get a lot more ideas about how, like, we've heard a whole bunch of creative um, responses to questions today. And yeah, we hope to do more and hopefully help you guys build a community to do that yourselves. So Yeah, so to wrap up, we have two sessions left for office hours. And we've been so grateful that you decided to spend an hour of your busy day on every Tuesday to come together to brainstorm and collectively problem solve together for each of us to have these community-based solution, which then start changing the culture. So for the next week, we all committed to engaging with our community in some way, either by practicing how you talk about it before you reach out to your community or directly reaching out to the community because I'm just keeping, I'm just keep looking at the sea turtle. We just got to swim. Like the coordination between the arms and the, legs and my head and my neck and my back is going to be weird, but I can only figure it out when I can get in the water. So I hope this session today, especially we just spent a bulk of it kind of thinking about what to do to prepare for the hurricane tomorrow can help you really think about how together we know a lot. So let's just jump in. You don't have to feel like you know everything. Let's jump in. Just share whatever you know right now, what you feel is true to your heart right now. And whatever question you get, you don't have to have the answer. Bring the question over to the office hour next week. Bring the people over to the office hours next week, and then we can figure things out together. And as you probably see in the canvas, we have already templates and forms, things that you could use from that we have created for the People Power Battery Collective that you could easily change. We can decide to workshop it if we want to, or you can just go ahead and like share with your community and see what things look like. So really excited to see you next week, to see where you get. And um, the most important thing is we've got to get out of our head and get into the water and just start swimming like the sea turtle. Thank you all so much for being in this with us and bring the tenderness and the love, fierce love for the space because this is hard stuff that we're all trying to figure out how we can move in a way that's different from the way that our culture is. But this is the way that our ancestors have been doing this for millennia. And we're just remembering how our, our body works. That's all based in love and each other. So we got us. Thank you all. <laughs>